Hello and welcome to the Daily Post on this 24th day of September. We've got some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we hope will be helpful for you through this day. As usual, we begin with the scripture and today it comes from the first letter to Timothy, chapter 6 and verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, we move on through Song of Solomon, chapters 4 and 5, and Galatians, chapter 3. The thoughts of the day. I do not feel obliged to believe that the same God who endowed us with sense, reason, and intellect has intended us to forego their use. You have it easily in your power to increase the sum total of this world's happiness now. How? By giving a few words of sincere appreciation to someone who is lonely or discouraged. The world is full of willing people. Some are willing to work. The rest are willing to let them. The motivational thought for the day. Our envy of others devours us most of all. On this day, in 622 on this day, Muhammad's Hegira took place. The Prophet Muhammad escaped death by completing the Hegira, or flight, to Medina from Mecca. In 1852, the first hydrogen-filled airship powered by a three-horsepower steam engine built by Henry Gifford, made its maiden flight at Versailles in France. In 1952, on this day, America's fast food restaurant chain, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, opened its first franchise in Salt Lake City, Utah. In 1960, on this day, the world's first nuclear-powered submarine the USS Enterprise, was launched at Newport, Virginia. And in 1975, the world's highest mountain, Mount Everest, was successfully scaled for the first time on this day via its southwest face by British climbers Doug Haston and Doug Scott. In 2013 on this day, 515 people were killed by a magnitude 7.7 earthquake in Balochistan, Pakistan. The personal story of the day, the simplicity of freedom. Concert pianist Jeanette Hyen believes that the structure of a fine musical composition actually provides great freedom for the person who plays it. She said, within the strictures that is the structure, of so-called form, is all the freedom in the world. Unquote. It's easy to feel confined by structure in our faith because we have natural resistance to rules. But God's commands are given to enhance our lives rather than to restrict them. As we read in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Instead of weighing us down, they protect us from the burden of sin. As we follow his commands, we experience liberty. Speaking of an excellent musical composition, Jeanette Hyen says, quote, Under the laws of structure, you have the freedom to work in the freest way imaginable. What the composer has written, is that which I honour, unquote. The Bible is our sheet music for living. Today, we can play the song of life as God has written it, and we can discover anew the promises of Christ to those who follow him. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth is, shall make you free, was recorded in John chapter 8 verses 31 and 32. Amen to those thoughts.
very important to keep in mind. The devotional thoughts of the day, the first, answer quickly. Scripture from Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 2. I sleep, but my heart waketh. The woman has made preparation for bed and is in a set pattern of her own comfort. However, her lover knocks on the door to speak with her, but it is not convenient for her. Finally, she relents and she gets up and opens the door, but he's gone. This is part of a dream sequence and goes on to describe the awakening of the true intimacy she has with her beloved. There is a spiritual message for the individual or the church to awaken out of its own sleep. But once awakened moving, there are hurdles and obstacles to overcome. As she desperately seeks his company so their love can be confirmed, she is poorly treated by a night watchman who steals her cloak and treats her poorly. This happens to us in this world. Those who are called to care for our souls, those are religious leaders or family members, are often the ones who hurt us and bring pain as we search for the true love of Christ to be revealed within us. We are reminded in Romans 13 verse 11, and that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Exactly the same story that Solomon delivered in his love letter. The Lord is knocking now. Awaken and enjoy the spiritual pleasures of his company. But remember, there are obstacles to overcome, mainly from within sometimes from without. However, on this occasion, there is a church full of people willing to help you find or refind your first love. Praise the Lord for those th thoughts and words which we must take to heart. The second thought, criticism and negativity. Scripture from James chapter 3 and verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. I'm sure all of us have heard criticism before, either about someone or someone criticising us. Criticism is hurtful if not applied correctly, and the correct way to apply criticism is to avoid it. Instead of criticising, why not give Praise. Find something good to comment about the person on. And, if the problem still exists, why not talk with them about it? And perhaps give a suggestion rather than a criticism. Too often, adults will say things to children that could be worded differently and which would have had a different effect on each child. We need to say positive things to children if they won't do their duties, let them know the consequences of carelessness. Don't tell them how lazy they are or that they will never amount to anything in their lives. Children need motivation, not the development and confirmation of a learned behaviour. When speaking to others, we need to have a positive thought rather than negative. If we can't speak good things, we need to keep our mouth shut. When we criticise, it also puts a bad light on us. If we cannot identify the good points about something first, put them in perspective and then offer a solution that will work, we certainly can't criticise our way to a solution. Remember, sometimes you may be in error and may be the one that needs criticism. Give the Lord time to establish the right solution rather than undermine the faith of others with continual fault-finding. We need to think through those ideas as well. The facts of the day. In England, in the 1880s, the word pants, P-A-N-T-S, was considered a dirty word. <laughs> More money is spent on gardening than on any other hobby. 
And the closing thought. Lord, give me an insight so I can understand my true value the way you see me. Thanks for joining us today. We hope that the uh, uh, scriptures and thoughts and ideas will be helpful and uplifting for you through the day and we hope that you'll join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. And bye for now.